Today we are going to talk about the role of counter current mechanism in concentrating urine. Do you know that there are two requirements to form concentrated urine? Number one is high level of ADH, which increases the water permeability of distal tubule and collecting ducts of kidney, causing more water to reabsorb from tubular fluid. Number two is high osmolarity of medullary interstitium. Hyperosmolarity of medullary interstitium is produced by operation of loop of Henle as a countercurrent multiplier and maintained by the operation of Vasa recta as countercurrent exchangers. Both of them are called as countercurrent mechanism. To this, our topic is the countercurrent mechanism. What is a countercurrent mechanism? A countercurrent mechanism is a system where the inflow and outflow run in close proximity, also are parallel to each other and run in an opposite direction. We can see such systems in Vasa recta and loop of Henle of kidneys. Let's see how the couch current multiplies work. It happens in loop of Henle, point number one. In the thick ascending part of the loop of Henle, several ions are transported into the medullary interstitium but this part of the nephron is water impermeable, so the transported ions are not followed by the water. So this part adds ions to interstitium in excess of water. The solids are trapped in medulla because of the count current exchanges. I'll come to that later. For now, remember that they are trapped when more and more inflow comes from proximal convoluted tubules into this part of nephron that ions also especially sodium and chloride, are reabsorbed by the transporters in this part and keep adding more and more ions into the interstitium. Eventually, it multiplies, raises the interstitial fluid osmolarity to 1,200 milliosmoles per liter. Point number two. The sanding lip of loop of Henle has high permeability to water, so it reabsorbs water, making the tubular fluid hyperosmotic, more concentrated. But here, the diffusion of water into medullary interstitium is less than the reabsorption of solutes into medullary interstitium. Point number three. Urea also plays a role to produce high osmolarity of medullary interstitium. When ADH level is elevated, water reabsorption is increased from the both cortical and inner medullary collecting ducts, causing higher concentration of urea in the tubular fluid. High concentration of urea in inner medullary collecting ducts causes urea to diffuse into interstitium. When more urea is deposited, the concentrating capacity of kidney increases. Therefore, we can tell High protein diet increases the ability of kidney to concentrate urine. So these are the major factors that contribute to build up hyperosmolarity in medulla. Now let's look about the countercurrent exchanges, vasa recta. You know that there are two types of nephrons, cortical and ducts of medullary. Capillaries draining cortical nephrons form aperitubular capillaries. But capillaries of juxtamedullar nephrons drain not only to the peritubular capillaries but also to vasa recta. Vasa recta dips into the medulla with loop of Henle. Let's concentrate on vasa recta. Here is the descending vasa recta which is non fenestrated, and this is the ascending vasa recta which is fenestrated. See, it also has a count current mechanism. Blood flow to the renal medulla from them is very low, less than 5% of total renal blood flow, and it is sufficient to supply the metabolic needs of the cells in medulla. Low blood flow also helps to minimize solids loss from medullar interstitium. Here, when the blood descends through vasa recta into the medulla, solids enter into vasa recta from interstitium and water loss from the vasa recta into interstitium. So, the descending limb of vasa recta becomes progressively concentrated and finally, in the tips of the vasa recta, it contains a fluid of 1200 milliosmol per liter. 
But when blood descends back, solids diffuse back out to the medullary interstitium, water moves into vast recta, and blood becomes less concentrated. Therefore, solids recirculate in the medulla. So the osmotic gradient created by current-to-current -current multipliers will not wash out. Medullary osmolarity is maintained. Let's summarize this in one diagram. From thick part of ascending part of loop of Henle, solutes are transported into medullary interstitium. The solutes enter into descending part of vasa recta and diffuses from the ascending vessels into interstitium. So solutes tend to recirculate in medulla. From descending part of loop of Henle, water moves out into the medulla, and also from the descending part of the vasa recta, water diffuses out. But water diffuses into the descending part of vasa recta, so water bypasses the medulla. That's all for this video. Hope you got it clearly. Thank you for watching. Let's meet from another video.